and me historically haven't had a uh, perfect relationship nor a, uh, a great start. Um, I can remember back the first time I met her. I remember when I was at the age of seven or eight, my dad would uh, pull me out of bed and we would go to the airport to pick up Auntie Menchi. And I recall it was like midnight or so. And uh, when dad introduced Auntie Menchi to me at the airport terminal, um, she looked at me and I looked at her and uh, I didn't have a, uh, a good impression of her, nor did she. For some random reason, I knew that our relationship, relationship was going to be kind of shaky at the beginning. And so it was. One time, I got so fed up of uh, Auntie Menchie being around me, I could, I could call. It was me, my dad, my mom. I don't know why Auntie Menchie, but I called you a fat lady. <laughs> Auntie Menchie, I know I didn't say sorry to you then. For somehow, you understood my adolescence and immaturity back then. So, thanks for understanding me on that. About uh, 10 years afterwards, I decided to go to the East Coast to spend time with my cousins, May and Tala. And one time, we spent a weekend in Paramus, where their house is located at. So it was me, Tala, May, we were just talking away as teenagers. Tala, you were younger than that. We were just talking about anything, bonding as cousins. One time, during that, 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 during that event, Auntie Menchi walks in, and she decides to sit down and lay back in her bed and, and talk with us. And she brings up the notion and the topic about the word family. I remember clearly, Auntie Menchi says, you guys are cousins. You should learn how to love, respect, and be there for one another, because family is there through thick and thin. You guys are cousins. You should learn how to love one another. She said it very eloqu eloquently. She said it with grace. Those were interesting words at a time I'll never forget what she said about family. Speaking about words, I would like every single person in this room that knows her for the past eight years of her life to please close her eyes right now. Please close her eyes. Now, think of the very first word that comes to your mind, whether, whether it's simple or complex. How do you think Gunthi Menchie has been to you? Okay. You know, guys, people, I try that method and approach, and it doesn't work for me. Auntie Menchie, you are the most kind, respectful, understanding, charis charismatic, compassionate, you're strong, you are an unwilling woman. Even though we were on different coasts, you are on the East Coast, on the West Coast, it didn't matter. And when it came to family, you were the rock, you were the catalyst, you were the glue. You were basically our leader. You are basically the seams of our family fabric name, Nazareno. Now, I thank you for all those attributes, those qualities you post for me and every family member here in this room, as well as, as, well as knowing you. I thank you for being an inspiration. I thank you for your understanding. I thank you for the time that I called you fat lady, as well as to the times what you define family as to us. I thank you for being the woman that you stood for. Everything I knew about you personifies grace and quality as a woman. I am thankful that you are my aunt. I know that God called you home. You're in a better place. We all want to get there. And I know for a fact that you're with uh, Uncle Bert, a dear Mark, Dad. And uh, I'll know this. You're in a better place. We'll pray for you.
never forget you. All I can say is that you pray for us. Because I know our families have little problems here and there. That we get, we find our ways. So, I thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Menchie, for being there. Thank you for what you stood for. Thank you for people who listen to my words. And thank you for your time. Thank you, Auntie Michi. We love you. God bless you. Let us come together to celebrate this holy Eucharist. Of course, tomorrow we will be celebrating her life. Uh, the funeral mass will be tomorrow. But as a vigil mass, let's come together uh, in a way preparing actually we are uh, doing the novena or the prayer since a few days. So let us come together, offer her in the hands of the Lord, let's pray for her, let's thank the Lord for the gift that she was to us. And at the same time, let us ask from God for his grace, for his mercy and the comfort for each and every one of us. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Father, as we come together to remember our loving Dominga and pray for your blessings upon her, we offer her in your hands, bless her, forgive her sins, bless all those who have surround here now, that we may remember her, offer her in your hands and ask your blessings upon each one of us, upon Dominga and all those who have touched by her in their lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
When you did not hesitate to get up and leave your dinner in order to go and bury the dead, I was sent to put you to the test. At the same time, however, God commissioned me to heal you and your daughter-in-law, Sarah. I am Raphael, one of the seven angels who enter and serve before the glory of the Lord. So now get up from the ground and praise God. Behold, I am about to ascend to him who sent me. Break down all these things that have happened to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, response for the song. Uh, response is, Blessed be God who lives forever. Blessed be God who lives forever. He scourges and then and then his mercy. He casts down to the depths of the nether world and he brings up from the great abyss. No one can escape his land. Him. Blessed be God who lives forever. So now, consider what has done for you. <clears throat> and he and praises him with full voice. Bless the Lord of righteousness and exalt the King of ages. Blessed be God who lives forever. In the land of exile, I praise him and show his powers and majesty to a sinful nation. Blessed be God who lives forever. Bless the Lord, all of you has chosen ones, and may all of your praises and his majesty. Celebrate the days of gladness and praise him. Blessed be God who lives forever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel upon the same mark. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues and places of honor at banquets. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury, for they have all contributed from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks. As we come together to pray for our loving Dominga Itamanji, it is worth reflecting our life in this world. Of course, we are all just pilgrims here. We do not have a permanent dwelling here. But as we are in this world, being part of the world, we may have to undergo so many trials, pain, suffering, sicknesses, all this. But then how do we handle it? Perhaps Tita Manji was someone who handled it in a successful way, I would say. And for us, we will reflect about her life tomorrow in a deeper way. But as for us to reflect now, this this the story of Tobit, Sarah, and Tobiah is something to be worth reflected about our life. Uh, I don't know how many of you might know the whole story of Tobit and Tobiah. Uh, it's a 
it is normal if you are able to read any time from the past, from the, from the Bible, later any time. It's a beautiful story which really reflects our lives. Chobit was a very, very virtuous man, yeah, so as to say, a real model disciple uh, in this world who really believed in God and tried to live God, God's blessings in his life, reaching out to other people. One of the main aspects of living Christianity in a meaningful way is doing works of mercy. And in the story of Tobit, what we see is that he always, he did not care about his selfishness, his self or his own life, but he always tried to reach out to other people, do good for other people, and even we can see there are stories of when somebody dies, because this, this story comes from when the, the chosen people, the Israelites were taken into exile, the Assyrian exile, and they were, though not slaves, you know, when you are in exile, you can see that there is no complete freedom, and sometimes they may oppress you, kill you, nobody may question you if something is done against you. So here, these Jewish people are sometimes just simply attacked, they may be killed, they are just there, nobody cares for them. And then Toby would go, even leaving his food, that is night or day, go, not worrying about his life, he would carry this dead paper and bury them. But though he used to do all these good works, then what happens is that finally, uh, unfortunately, he became blind. And for over five years, he was blind, and then all the people would pick on him, even his neighbors, his relatives, everyone see you see you are living this always faithful to God and see what is happening to you. Uh, uh, it is might be because of your sinfulness on one side you might be doing all these good works but behind the door you might be a sinner, these kind of things they would say. And so he was fed up with that. And then he would pray, God, you know my heart. It is not that easy to live in this world, so take my life, he used to pray. And then there is a kind of, a, another act like in a play, there is the other side, Sarah, who was married seven times, and each time before she get, uh, uh, they get into the relationship, the husbands are killed. And then there also, even her maids and everyone would pick on her, uh, abuse her, and then she also prayed, praying the same thing, Lord, take my life. And even she tried to take her own life, but then she, she uh, have a kind of con uh, conversion and saying, no, I don't want to take my life, because my life is a gift but you can take my life. And he's, she's asking God, take my life. So both these prayers are going to God. God hears what happens. Then as you read today's reading, the archangel Raphael is sent. And he comes, and they don't understand who it is. A young man come here to help them. And he takes Tobits and Tobiah to this part place where, where Sarah lives. And on the way they talk about and they uh, catch a fish and from that he's saying you should keep that fish because it will come to you. So that's what we see with that fish he is healing Tobit from his blindness. On the other hand, there, they went there and he makes arrangements for the wedding of Tobiah with Sarah. And then they are coming back. So the, the beautiful passage which we read is that they all come together as a kind of resurrection from the all their uh, life to be dead like, almost to be withdrawn from this world. But now they are all happy because God came to their help, sending the messenger itself in a direct way. And then the beautiful thing what we have to 
to use that today. It's this Belinda. Now you are all happy. But now, live your life praising God, fasting, and doing arms giving charitable life. Something always what we have to remember is that in our life here on earth, we all, when this kind of troubles and tribulations come around, we pray. We pray, we fast, we do all kinds of penance and everything, and once we have succeeded, we forget. Then no more penance, no more fasting, nothing. But the angel replied, is saying to them, spend your life praising God, thanking God for all the blessings that you receive. And do good. And today's gospel, what we hear is Jesus is saying almost the same thing. Jesus is saying, see all these wealthy people, they put big sums big amount in the treasury. But Jesus is commenting, praising that poor widow who was able to put only two pennies, saying that she put everything she has. What matters is that not how much we give, but give your heart to God. That's when a scribe is coming and asking the God, to Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? He is saying, love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. When we live our life, completely surrendering to God, doing good, instead of thinking our own good, God, in our wonderful creation, you must give us this bread to open, which earth has given and human hands to our need. We will come for the bread of life. Blessed be God. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the liberty of Christ to come to himself to share our humanity. Blessed be God, in our wonderful creation, you must give us this wine to open. Work of wine and work of human hands to become our spiritual drink. Blessed God. Lord God, we ask you precious and we praise you for the sacrifice we offer you in humble and contrite hearts. <coughs>
that through this most holy exchange, we may advance towards eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. The the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and ended willingly in his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. <coughs> Do this in memory of The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and we come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Jose our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brother, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, especially our loving Dominga and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them in the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph and his house, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be honored to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Through him and with him and in him, our God, Almighty Father, in the unity 
of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray to the Father and the rest of the same in Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you, Savior of all sins, I give you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And be just given. Let us greet each other, sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I'm not worthy to be here, but I'm not worthy to be here. But I'm going to say the word, and my soul shall be And, O oh Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity 
in that shared new divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood. And may our Tita Manji may experience who received your body and blood always in her life, your eternal life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. May the Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Jen Nazareno Malish, and the daughter of Jaime Nazareno, Nina Mici's youngest brother. Nina was my godmother, and she, along with Nina Florence, Auntie Magaya, Nana Iska, and Uncle Danny, would help take care of me and my brother in the, her home. Um, until we were about eight or nine years old in Promise, New Jersey. In fact, I still remember the address of their home, 778 Decker Place, Promise, New Jersey. Perhaps this address is forever etched in my mind because this place was like a second home for my brother and I because we spent a special part of our childhood there. Particularly, I have very fond memories of the kitchen and the kitchen table where we would all gather for the oh-so-delicious food lovingly prepared by Nina and the other aunties. I will always remember this space as a special area where my brother and my cousins, like Nina and Auntie Melanie, Tala, May, and Anissa, just all of us, all our cousins, gathering together, spending time, laughing, just missing, sharing stories, teasing each other, and reminiscing as a family. But most of all, Nina Menchi and Jenner Place represented a second home filled with Nina's unconditional love, her generosity, her countless sacrifices for the Nazarino family for over the past 60 plus years. I was able to whisper into Nina's ear at the hospital before she passed away that we were so thankful for everything she did for our family. I was also able to speak to my dad the other day and he said, I love her so much. I'm gonna miss her. She's my sister still. She helped us a lot with your mom. So today, I just want to take the time to reiterate, and on behalf of myself, my dad, my mom, my brother, I want to thank you, Nina, for everything you did for us, for guiding us all these years, for helping us start our lives both in New Jersey and in California, for all your financial assistance, for taking care of me and Jason. All those years ago, throughout the good times, as well as some of the more challenging ones. To the Quilau family, thank you for your love and kindness throughout the years, and for helping to take care of Nina, especially as her help horse. Nina Mechi, we will miss you and the anchor that you represented in our immediate family, as well as the Nazareno family as a whole. Your countless sacrifices Will never ever be forgotten. We love you. Love you, Nina.
who is in the Philippines and unable to join us today, but is with us in heart. Good afternoon, relatives, friends, acquaintances. My memories of Tita Menchi may not be as extensive as most of you, but the ones I do have, I deeply cherish. Foremost in my mind about Tita Menchi is her love and care for her family. When my dad was still alive, a month will not pass by where they will not have a conversation via the telephone. I can still see my dad smile and, and hear his laughter when they talk over the phone. Whenever Tita Menchi visited us here in the Philippines and we visit her in Nani, I remember her being warm and generous. She is also quite straight and very frank. I love to watch Korean telenovelas. <laughs> as generous as she can, she always had a helping hand to her relatives and to those who are in need. Tita Menchi, I pray that you together with my dad, my mom, my brothers, and Tita Amor, Tita Gojo, will forever be embraced by God's everlasting love. You will be forever, you will forever be in our hearts. To sum it up all, let me quote Psalm 27, verses 4 to 5. One thing I ask from the Lord, this is only do I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Lisa and Hazar in the festival. And then if you guys would allow me, I read, I composed a little message for my aunt too. Um, if I had to choose one word to describe my Tita Menchi, the word generous comes to mind right away. She had a big heart and she gave unselfishly to anyone in need. My family benefited heavily from her generosity. She helped finance our education and was also instrumental in getting us here in the United States. So we as a family can also experience and live the American dream like she did. Thanks to her tenacity and kindness, we are now the living proof that dreams do come true. Too bad that eulogies are not given while the president is still alive, because even though you're not here with us physically, I'm sure that your spirit is here and hopefully enjoying this trip. Thank you again, Tita Menchu, for the book of the I also want to thank Tita Flor and Tita Ligaya for your undying love for my aunt. You ladies treated her like she was your own family. Your angels, both of you, and the whole Nazarene family will be forever grateful to you for your kindness. Also thanks to all the relatives and friends that are here today who made the trip to say her goodbyes to our beloved Tita. Your presence is truly appreciated. And finally, I want to personally thank my Tita for helping me become the person that I am now. Have a good long rest, Tita Menchi. You deserve it. I will miss you a lot. God bless you, and I'm so happy that you'll be finally re reunited with your parents, Nana and Tata, your siblings, Bert, Godo, Amor, and Melda, your sister, Lotita Dalitsai, and your two nephews, Bongo and Popoy. Goodbye, Tita Menchi, and I love you. Your nephew, Chili Sam. I know it's only 2.45, we usually do the Divine Mercy at 3 o'clock, but um, we're going to do the Divine Mercy, Mercy Chapel right now so we can get back to eat. <laughs> Name Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
sake of his soul and compassion. Have mercy on us and in the whole world. Holy God, Holy God, Holy 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 Mighty God, Holy 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 have mercy on us and in the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and in the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and in the whole world. Thank you. 